Welcome back, everybody. IGN, live at E3 2016. I'm Max Scoville, and I'm with David Cage. Hi. You are director of Detroit from Quantic Dream. Uh, people should know who you are, because you make a lot of very weird games. That one where Ellen Page went on adventures with a ghost. Willem Dafoe was there. That was wacky. Uh, you're back with Detroit, which uh, we saw a bit of a demo of this uh, on the Sony press conference. Um, we've seen a trailer before, but we got to look at how the game looks in action. Can we pull this up right now? Because I think this is honestly the best way I've seen one of your games demoed. Uh, this is all about player choice and adventure, and can you speak a little bit about your approach here? Absolutely. So Detroit is a neo-noir thriller set in the near future, of course, in the city of... Detroit. Detroit, you got it. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, it, in this world, technology made possible the creation of androids that look, speak, move exactly like uh, human beings, except they are just machines. So, um, as in Heavy Rain, we have several characters that the player can play. We have introduced previously uh, the character of Kara at Paris Games Week. And now, here at E3, we came with a playable scene to introduce our second playable character called Connor. And what is really special in this game is that we only control androids. Oh, wow. Okay. No humans. So okay. we have several characters, but only androids. So we'll see the world through their eyes. And of course, they are treated like objects, but they start to feel emotions. And uh, who knows what's going to happen. So one thing I love is that, uh, you know, you've always, you've always strived for very realistic games. And, you know, people have probably made complaints about the Uncanny Valley and maybe not quite getting that human look. And now we finally are at that point where if you squint, that just looks like live action and you're making a game about artificial humans. <laughs> so I, what's the, um, is, it, is it like Heavy Rain in, in that it's uh, kind of like staggered, uh, kind of jumps around in narrative, or is it uh, more like, more vignette-like? Well, it's, it's in structure, it's similar to Heavy Rain. You have different scenes with different characters, and they start as individual stories. But as you build your own story, they will interlace, connect, and tell the big story. What was very important to us in this game was to put the player in the shoes of the character and not just make him the actor of the story, but make him the, the writer, the co-writer of the story. Right. So we want the player, through his actions, his decisions across the game, to build his own narrative and get his own version of the story. Okay. Uh, one thing I'm really curious about is, obviously, this is something that puts a huge emphasis on on replaying and seeing the, seeing the, different, you know, the different stories. Uh, can you speak a bit about the length of the game? Well, the game is going to be about 8 to 10 hours, pretty okay. much like Beyond and Heavy Rain. But the, this game will have a lot of replayability value because you can really go back and replay the scenes and see all the things you missed. My recommendation, as I said on Heavy Rain and on Beyond, would be for players to play what, the first walkthrough bearing with the consequences of their actions and just getting your own version of the story and see where it leads you. But once you're done with this first walkthrough, you can just go back and replay as much as you want and see all the things you missed. So this game is much more bending. You know, we, we, we talk about bending stories. It's much more bending than a, any game we have done before. We just wanted to push the envelope on pretty much a, everything in the game, from the visuals to the, the, the branching narrative to everything. And just this very first scene has many ways of being played and can lead to six different outcomes just this very first scene. And each scene is structured a little bit like this. And on top of this, of course, one scene can have consequences and will have consequences on other scenes. So it's an increasing complexity that the player builds himself through his action. But one more important thing is that, and we can see here the oh, wow. chart, just to, to show you what this scene is like. One important thing is that characters can die. So there is no game over in this game. So okay. If you die with one character, is lost. That was going to be my next question, actually. So that's that's really cool. Uh, so like, you can, how how early in the game can you kill a character off and then be stuck with that? Well, Connor can die in this very first scene. Oh my God. And whatever you do in this very first scene can have very significant consequences much later in the game. So you'd better be careful. Each scene has its own style and its own tone and pacing, but you always need to be careful because remember, you tell your story. Okay. Uh, you've been pushing the boundaries of, of interactive storytelling uh, quite a lot. Uh, how, is, how has the technology kind of changed or how has it made it easier for you? Well, we are really a technology-driven company yeah. at Quantic Dream. We love to make one engine per game. 
which is something totally insane and crazy and unreasonable. Yeah, what's wrong but, with you? That's a crazy we, well, idea. Well, we love doing it, so <laughs> we do it. No, it, it, it's game. We want to push the envelope as much as we can. And, you know, we work exclusively for Sony on this title. And we really wanted to show, to make the PlayStation shine as much as we could. And uh, so we developed a brand new engine. It's de different from the engines we had on the Heavy Rain PS4 or Beyond PS4 or even the Dark Sorcerer demo that we did um, some years ago. It's, it's a totally new engine. We wanted to have a better lighting system. We wanted to have a you know, better depth of field, better bokeh, all the crazy skin shaders, translucency on the ears. You know, translucency is this crazy thing where you, when you have a strong light behind your ear, it becomes red. You know, yeah, I know, I know. That's, uh, it's absolutely required for emotion in a game. Yeah. You don't have that, you have nothing. No oh kidding, but of course, uh, it's all these little things with the technology no one really cares about, but it's the addition of all these small things that helps to create uh, some the visuals that yeah. you can see for Detroit. I mean, your attention to detail is, is impressive. I, I don't know any other games besides Heavy Rain where I change a diaper. Like, they, it's, it's always the little, it's little things. Is you that know? a complaint or are you happy about this? I, I spent a lot of time in that scene. I was very okay. bad at it. So, so, oh, no. So you were <laughs> trained as a father. So <laughs> thanks to Heavy Rain. Not a good dad. Um, <laughs> definitely not a good game about parenting. Um, um, are, how, how many actors are you working with for this? Because you do a lot of, these are these human beings that you cover with ping pong balls and videotape? Or is it, are they... So, you know, this pipeline is very special at Quantic Dream about how we create characters because all these characters that you can see in the games, they are real people. So we, uh, we do casting sessions, we find the right, the best actors for the roles, then we scan their face in 3D, scan their body, recreate their avatar as close as possible from the real one, and then we go on the um, performance capture set and just record their performance. And then we play this performance on their avatar, and here you go, you have what you see. It was really funny because we had um, um, Connor, or Connor in the game, uh, who was here at E3 yesterday, uh, is a young actor called Brian Deckard, and he's a very, very talented actor. And it was really funny because we showed the demo to well, people. Well, you cast a guy named Deckard as an android? Absolutely, I knew you would say that, yeah. Nicely done. And that was the main reason why we cast him in. I like that. His name. You're hired. <laughs> you got the and, job. But it was really funny because people watched the demo, and then we say, oh, by the way, Connor's here, and they turn you know, back, and it, it was such a big shock. Yeah. It was really funny to watch. That's bizarre. Uh, do you have a release date for this? Um, not yet. Not, not yet? But are we, are we shooting for this year or is it next year? No, or is it, it's not going to be this year. When it's done, it's done. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> David, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank you, my pleasure. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. My pleasure. Guys, we have lots more games at E3. Uh, actually, not that many because it's wrapping up. But stay tuned because we do have more stuff coming up.